Hey, what's going on, you guys? My name is Very Useful Engine, and today I will be making a guide on the Fairman's Lantern. Lantern is a brutality slash tactics two-handed weapon with a unique mechanic of soul. It's similar to Hollow Knight, where you can do melee attacks to collect souls and then fire them off as projectiles. To release the souls, you hold down alternate fire, and if you release three or more at once, they will deal critical hits which do massive damage. They also have really strong auto tracking, and the crits will always pierce the first target. Today I'm going to give you the best tips, tricks, and builds to win runs with the Ferryman's Lantern. And if you want to see any more guides, 5BC runs, rankings, or other Dead Souls related content, be sure to subscribe as it really helps me out and it helps my channel grow a lot. So with that out of the way, let's get started on the guide. So if you need to know where the Lantern drops from, it comes from the Apostates in the Undying Shores as you would guess. They're the big men with the Lanterns that can both revive fallen comrades and swing the Lantern at you. I am both shield and sword. The drop chance is 0.4% so you'll definitely want to pick up a hunter's grenade to get the blueprint. Now as far as the strengths of the weapon are concerned, I'd say the 3 hit combo does do pretty decent damage and some good breach. Uh, the range attack gives you the ability to deal with any enemy that you need to, whether they be hard or whether they be elites or even the mini ticks in the Moros of the Banished. The range attack doesn't have any damage cap on bosses since you're firing out multiple projectiles at once, which means you can do huge damage. And there's also the auto tracking that it has, which makes it very good at dealing with flying enemies and you're able to even use it from above an enemy. Now for the weaknesses, I think one of the biggest ones definitely is that it has a pretty short range with the swing. So quick enemies can be a pretty big pain to deal with. The range attack obviously takes time to charge, so you're either going to have to position yourself well or you're going to have to make use of skills in order to get a full charge shot off. And it is a pretty slow weapon overall, both in its play style and the 3 hit combo isn't exactly super fast. It's definitely not slow, but it's not on par with other brutality weapons. And now for the strategy of the weapon, I think the biggest thing really is just your ammo management. So there's a couple different aspects to that. First is just not wasting your souls. What the souls are so good at is that they can kill flying enemies and they can one shot any difficult enemy that you need them to. And they're also pretty great in mobs as well just because of the guaranteed piercing and the high damage so you can take out groups of enemies pretty quickly with them. So I definitely don't think you should just be going around and using your souls haphazardly on stuff that you might not need them to because that way you'll be minimizing your potential with the weapon and potentially losing out on the ability to kill enemies more effectively. Basically what I'm trying to say is don't use your souls unless it's necessary, but you shouldn't be afraid to use them because the piercing and the massive damage are both very great elements, and if you're not going to use the souls often then there's no point in even using the lantern. So don't be petrified to use them, just don't go around using them on every single enemy because you'll lose out on damage and just it'll make the game harder for you overall. And the other important aspect of ammo management is saving up your ammo for curses and bosses. So one example is earlier in this Prison Depths clip, you saw me go in with some ammo already floating around me. So what that allowed me to do is just get a couple of free curse kills, because I could go far away from enemy and then charge up the souls for some really big crit damage. And the same thing goes for bosses to an even bigger extent, because with the three hit combo, bosses are a bit difficult. But if you can get off a bunch of souls on them at once, you'll do really, really big damage against them. So be smart. Save some souls for your harder situations, because that way it'll just make the game easier overall when you compare that to just using your souls whenever you feel like it. Another great tip is that you can charge up souls while midair and release them as soon as you hit the ground. And it's something you can do with a few weapons, like for example, Flint or the Scythe Claws. That's part of the reason why I say it's a slow weapon is because you have to charge it up similar to those things. But basically what you can do is start charging it up when you're in midair, and that way when you hit the ground you don't have to start charging it up in an enemy's face, it's already just queued up. And you can destroy an enemy instantly instead of worrying about having to charge right in front of them. Because most of the time that will just lead to damage anyways, as opposed to you just instantly destroying an enemy as soon as they hit the ground. Now for mutations. Uh, for brutality I think the number one choice is most likely Predator. So the reason why Predator is good it goes very well with the short range of the lantern swings, so that way you can just go invisible then get right in an enemy's face and start swinging. 
A, another thing about that is that you can charge up souls while invisible, and it won't actually reveal you while you're doing that. Another great option in a similar vein is melee, just because you are short range, and it's not a particularly fast weapon, so with melee mutation it negates both of those issues just by slowing down enemies and making them much easier to kill. I think in tactics your best option is crow's foot. Because like I said in my snake fangs guide, it's one of the few options that still works very well with melee weapons and tactics. And it helps with the slowness of the weapon. It makes fast enemies uh, much less painful to deal with. The slowdown can also allow you to get behind an enemy and do a charge shot. And that way you'll be able to do a lot of damage. Another great option is support. Because if you are running a turret in your build, then you'll be able to get a flat damage buff to both your swing and your charge shot. And that way, bosses and biomes will be much more easy to handle as long as you throw a turret down. Armadillo pack, even though it's a survival mutation, is also a very, very good option. Just because having the ability to parry with a two-handed weapon makes the game much, much easier. And you are kind of restricted in your playstyle whenever you use this weapon because it is two-handed. So having the shield there to be able to parry on roll and give you some statuses depending on what shield you use just makes the game much, much easier. Last one I want to talk about is ammo. So ammo, you see me using it now, it basically just doubles the amount of souls that you're able to collect. So that way you're not wasting any lantern kills where you would have normally been full. And it also makes boss fights much more easy to deal with. If you go in with a fully loaded ammo clip, you'll be able to do really, really good damage to them. In terms of weapons to use with the uh, lantern, obviously we can only really talk about shields that you could use with the armadillo pack mutation since it's a two-handed weapon. What shield you take just really depends on whether or not you want your actual parries to do damage. So you should take something on color if you want to do damage with your parries and the bombs and uh, projectiles that you reflect. So for brutality, that would be frontline shield and the bloodthirsty shield. And for tactics, it could be either parry shield or thunder shield if you have it. I don't think knockback shield is a very good choice just because the lantern swing, like I said, has very short range, so the knockback won't help you out. But you definitely don't need to take a shield that will do damage because, of course, you can just run a strictly survival shield. The two options that I think that work very well are the rampart and the ice shield, just because they're very utility-based shields, and even if you're not doing any damage with them, they'll still be a very, very crucial part of your run if you take them. Both of these shields work very, very well in your backpack. Rampart because it can make you invincible for 2 seconds I believe, and the ice shield because it gives you a very big freezing AoE, and it freezes uh, enemies where you reflect their projectiles. So in terms of skills, I think you should dedicate at least one of your skill slots to something that will let you get off a full on charge shot. One of those options for biomes is smoke bomb because you can charge up your souls while invisible and enemies won't be able to see you and punish you for charging them up. So you can go invisible, then get right in an enemy's face and charge up your souls and just kill them instantly. You can also take ice armor even though it is a survival uh, skill because even though it is survival, the scaling of it doesn't matter at all so you can just take it and that way if you need to charge up a shot, you can put on the ice armor and even if an enemy comes near you while you're charging, you can just ignore them because they're just going to hit your armor and freeze and then you can release your shot and kill them. Wings of the Crow actually works in tactics because, like I said, this weapon does have very good auto tracking, so even if you're right above an enemy with Wings of the Crow, you can still hit them with the charge shot. And enemies, 99% of the time, won't be able to hit you while you're right above them up in the air. So that way, you'll just be able to charge up your shot and release it onto them with the auto tracking and do the full damage. I also think Wings of the Crow is the best option against boss fights in particular. So if you see one right before a boss fight and you're running tactics, or even if you're not running tactics, I guess, then you can take Wings of the Crow for sure. Magnetic Grenade works very well. Uh, it groups up enemies so that the crits can pierce them, and it also holds them away from you with the gravitational pull of it. Then you have stuff like Heavy Turret, Wolf Trap, and Crusher. Those will all stun, root, or slow enemies. That way you can get off the full charge shot against them because they won't be able to react to you being there. I think the one out of those three that works best on bosses is Wolf Trap. Because as long as they don't get out of the trap, you'll just be able to charge up your shot and do really, really big damage to bosses. 
Not for all the normal skills that don't particularly have to do with using the alternate fire. Uh, in tactics, you of course have turrets as well as the Great Isle of War. That's kind of like the benefit of running tactics is that you get to use those. And then pretty much all of those are very, very good. So you can take those. You can take support mutation with them, unless it's the owl, of course. Another great skill is phaser, because it deals with the short range of the swings and it helps you get very quick kills off, which is something you normally can't do with the melee aspects of this weapon. So with phaser, you'll just be able to go around collecting souls very quickly and then use the souls on whatever enemy you need to. You can also use the serenade in brutality, actually. If you put it on your left skill slot, you can use it at the same time as the charge shot and it won't get you souls, but you'll be able to do crits on bosses with the melee aspect of that weapon. If you have serenade in your build as well, it will help you conserve the souls because you won't have to use them to kill flying enemies, you'll just let the serenade do that. And I think defensive options in general are pretty good, since you do really really big damage with your souls, you don't necessarily need damage dealing stuff. So you can take stuff like Ice Armor like I mentioned, but there's also Cocoon if you want to be able to parry on command even with a two-handed weapon. Then you can also take Wave of Denial. And yeah, that's kind of it for the skills. So just use one of the skills that will let you use your charge shot more effectively. The other one can be whatever you personally prefer using. And maybe you do personally prefer using like Ice Armor or Wings of the Crow, so you just take those and something else and that'll be your build. So in terms of where you should go with your build, I really think the main thing is to go to bosses that don't have phase transitions. So some of them aren't avoidable, like the Hand of the King and the 5 BC boss obviously. But you can go to bosses like Concierge for instance that just has one health bar, there's no phase transition or anything. So yeah, for the first boss Concierge, because the other two have phase transitions, so the avoidance of the boss damage cap isn't as big of a factor with this weapon. But if you go concierge, then you'll be able to just potentially one-shot him. Which is a bit of an exaggeration, but if you go in there with ammo mutation and some way to charge up your shot, you'll be able to do most of his health bar just in that little bit. Same thing goes for the second boss. Uh, you can go to giant, actually. I think giant is fine. Because if you swing the lantern at his eyeball, you'll be able to collect souls very easily. And the auto-tracking means you don't have to leave the ground to actually attack his fists. So giant fight isn't too bad, but if you are looking to just do a ton of damage in one shot to a boss, then either go to the new DLC boss, the Scarecrow, or of course you can go to the old classic, the Timekeeper. Both of those don't have any phase transitions, unlike giant, so you can just completely avoid the boss damage cap and do a ton of damage that way. For biomes, you can really go to whatever you want to. Uh, I think once you pass the concierge, I think you should go to biomes that give you more scroll fragments because you're already down just because you went through the concierge route. So going to biomes like Slumbering Sanctuary, for instance, are good. And they won't be too much of a challenge just because you have ways to deal with any difficult enemy that maybe like flying enemies or the golems or the ground shakers. Basically what I'm saying is even if you're not experienced in a biome, you can handle biome enemies very easily using the try shot. So even if a biome is very hard for you, with the right lantern build, you should be able to clear it out no problem. So yeah, that about does it for this guide. Be sure to like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're interested in seeing future guides or seeing any future 5BC runs. And with that said, I'll see y'all later.